Uh, hello, everybody. My name is uh, Bennett Tchaikovsky, and welcome to my managerial accounting uh, comprehensive uh, problem walkthrough. This is a question. So I don't write by Bennett Tchaikovsky. So um, all rights are reserved. And before I say thank you to myself, let's go over here and take a look at our question. Okay, so uh, during the month ended September 30th, 2024, the following information was available. Uh, so we've got all amounts are in thousands. So we have raw materials inventory, uh, beginning and ending, raw materials purchased, indirect materials, we don't know what those are. Indirect labor, we don't know what that is, but we do have over here with factory payroll, uh, some different items over here in terms of expenses. And we get down over here. So job 101 was completed and sold for 1200. Job 10, job 100 was completed and sold for 1200. Job 101 was uh, completed and sold for 950. Job 102 was completed, but it had not been sold. And job 103 was started and remained in process. Uh, overhead is applied at a rate of 60% of direct labor cost. Information about the jobs is as follows. So when you see one of these questions like this, and this is really gonna be for my exam, uh, what I'm gonna ask you to do is indirect materials, indirect labor, cost of goods manufactured, ending WIP, ending finished goods inventory, the journal entry to apply, uh, to record the under over applied factory overhead, assuming that the amount is a material, cost of goods sold, and then gross profit. So the thing you wanna do when you're doing these types of questions is you want to use T accounts and you want to set them up in this very way. And the reason why is because the costs are going to be flowing through to raw materials, to work in process, to finish goods, and then to cost of goods sold. So what we want to go through and do is to put in the information we know first into the T accounts. If it's been a while since you've had financial accounting or in terms of using T accounts, the way we generally use them is we say that our assets are equal to our liabilities plus our owner's equity, expenses, revenues, debit, credit, assets, which is going to be what the inventory accounts we're dealing with, typically have debit balances. They're increased with debits, decreased with credits. Um, expenses does typically have debit balances, but when we're looking at over here, these are really kind of more like the factory payroll and the overhead are really more of holding accounts for us. So we'll deal with those as those come up. So for my raw materials inventory, my beginning balance. Okay, so the ending as of July 31st, so the, the ending as of August 31st becomes the beginning as of September 1st. So my beginning balance right over here is at 60. My raw materials inventory at the end of the month was 120. Okay, my raw materials purchased over here, it's going to be at 500. Okay, so I don't know my indirect materials, but we'll get to that momentarily. Let's go ahead and go to factory payroll. My factory payroll for the month was at 540. Remember that factory payroll is made up of two things, direct labor and then indirect labor. Don't know what the indirect labor is, so we'll have to figure that out momentarily. When it comes to my factory overhead, right, what's going to go in there? Well, we do know that my indirect materials, as well as my indirect labor, will both go into factory overhead, but also too, pretty much anything with the word factory in it. So my factory utilities at 33, my factory insurance at 85. Now, insurance corporate, this is going to be something that's going to go in selling general administrative. It has to be related to the factory. So this is going to be a big no. Okay. Um, advertising expense also going to be a big no because that doesn't relate to our production, right? It supports us, but it's going to be a period cost. We're really focused right now on product costs. So over here, uh, factory equipment depreciation has the word factory in it. So it's going to go over here. My factory rent and factory property taxes. This is going to go right over here at 27. Okay. So we've got all those parts in here so far. This is going to be very important information, but we'll deal with that just momentarily. But over here, this is now telling us, well, what's in the work in process. So for job 100, 
my beginning whip is going to be 65 plus 80 plus 48 or 193. My beginning whip for job 101, job 101, 48, 70, 42, for a total of 160, right? So right over here, I know this is beginning, right? Because it's basically 830, 24 becomes 9, 1, 24. So my beginning job 102 is going to be 10 plus 20 plus 12 or 42. And for job 103, this over here is going to be a beginning of zero because this job was started during the month. Okay. Now, when it comes over here to direct materials, right? So over here, direct materials for job 100, so I mean, job 100 was 100, job 101 was 80, job 102 was 200, and job 103 was 50. So what I'm going to do over here is this is basically to 100, to 101, to 102, and then to 103. So the amount of my uh, the amount of direct materials I put into into production during December was 100. This is going to come out of raw materials, and this is going to go into work in process. So this is going to come through right over here. Okay, so when it basically says that the following productions were, if it was direct materials of 100, we have to ask ourselves, where did that actually come from? Well, it came from raw materials. So it leaves raw materials and goes into the work in process. For job 101, during September, the amount of the direct materials was 80. So we're going to have over here 80. It's going to leave raw materials. And then it's going to come down over here to my work in process for job 101. For job 102, the amount that's going in there is right over here at 200. It leaves over here raw materials inventory, and it's going to come down over here to our work in process for job 102. And DM is another word for direct materials or demon master, whatever you prefer. Okay, so for job 103, the amount of our direct materials is going to be 50. So this is going to be 50 to job 103. So this is going to leave over here, and it's going to come down over here to our work and process job 103. Now, if you're looking at this, you're probably saying, dude, yeah, we've, this, we've done this before in chapter 14, or we've done this for our just regular introduction to managerial accounting. The only difference here is we now have multiple work in process jobs because we're now doing this for the customer, right? We're customizing, we're job order costing. It means we're creating custom projects. We have to build each one of these individually. So now it comes, I need to make sure that this actually balances. And what this is going to represent, this is going to represent my indirect materials, right? So the indirect materials, just like indirect labor that we discovered before, this is going to travel down over here to our factory overhead. Okay. Now, how do we go through and figure this out? Well, if I'm solving this like an equation, it's going to be 60 plus 500. My debits minus 100 minus 80 minus 200 minus 50 minus X is going to be equal to 120. If I'm going through over here and solving for X, 60 plus 500 minus 100 minus 80 minus 200 minus 50 minus 120, this is going to give me the amount of 10. Whenever you compute a number, make sure that it works. 60 plus 500 is 560. The sum of right over here, the sum of 180, 250, and 10, this is going to be 440. 560 minus 440 is 120. So I know this balances, so this is the correct amount. So we're going to put that right down over here. It's going to go to our factory overhead. Okay, so now we're ready to do the same thing with factory payroll. So we're going to have over here 
to 100, to 101, to 102, to 103. And so our direct labor balance is over here. This is going to be 150 for job 100. This is going to be 90 for job 101. This is going to be 160 for job 102. And then for job 103, oh, this will be 160 and then 60, right? So again, all I'm doing over here is I'm basically taking the amounts and putting them into my factory payroll. So let's put these into our work and process accounts. Our DL is for our direct labor. So we've got direct labor, direct labor, direct labor, and direct labor. So this is going to job 100. This is going to job 101 is the 90. Job 102 is going to be the 160. And then job 103 is going to be the 60 over here. Now, what did we say about factory payroll? Well, factory payroll has to equal what? It has to equal zero. So the amount that I need to do over here to balance this is going to be, sorry, did I make sure I did this right? So 150, 90, 160, 60, yeah. So the amount I'm gonna to need to go through and to balance my factory payroll is gonna be 80, right? Because that's what, if I get 540 of credits, that's what's making the amount go to zero, okay? So this is gonna be my indirect labor. And where does that go to? This is gonna travel over here to our factory overhead, okay? So right over here, you've got 80, and this is gonna be our indirect labor. Okay, so here's all of our factory overhead, but this is all well and good, but one of the things we're doing when we're doing job order costing is we are estimating our overhead. And why is that? It's because these costs may not be coming through until the end of the period, and we have to invoice our customers quickly. Now it tells us that overhead is applied at 60% of direct labor cost. Now, what I want you to do over here with factory overhead is very important. On the left, I want you to write actual because these are the actual factory overhead costs. And on the right-hand side, I want you to write applied, okay? What does this mean? Well, we're applying uh, overhead at 60% of direct labor costs. What does that mean? That the applied factory overhead is going to be 150 times 0.6 or 90. This over here is going to be 90 times 0.6 or 54. Okay. Over here, this is going to be 160 times 0.6 or 96. And then over here, this is going to be 60 times 0.6 or 36. Okay, so when we apply factory overhead, there's a couple different ways we can do it, but you can do it like this. So we're going to take 90 times 0.6. Now, what's very important, and we're also going to do, it's going to be 150 times 0.6 of 90. What we have to make sure that we go through and do is that this number didn't come from anywhere. It came from over here. Okay. So the amount I'm applying for job 100 is at 90. For job 101, it's going to be at 54. For job 102, it's going to be at 96. And then for job 103, this is going to be 36. Okay. So right over here, basically for job 103, it's going to be at 36. So now what I'm going to do, so all I have done, right, if you kind of think about it, like, well, what did we do just now? Right? Well, what we've gone through and have done is we've essentially gone through and we've applied, we basically put everything into the T accounts, right? I've balanced out my factory payroll down to zero. I'm gonna worry about my factory overhead later. My, my raw materials is balanced. What I now need to figure out is what happened with each one of these jobs. Job 100 was completed and sold for $1,200. 
if my job was completed and sold, I cannot leave it in work in process. Can't leave it in here. So I'm going to have to move it out. Okay, so over here, I've got 533 of debits. It cannot stay in here. It's got to go to cost of goods sold. So over here, I'm going to show this as a credit. And this over here is going to be traveling to my finished goods inventory. So this 533 is going to come right over here, right? But it's not going to stay in there either. It's been completed. So it's going to leave over here. And then this is going to travel to my cost of goods sold. If it's completed and sold, it cannot stay in my finished goods inventory, can't stay in WIP. It's got to come over here. But for every credit, I need a debit. For every credit, I need a debit. So this is where it's ultimately going to be. So this language becomes extremely important. Okay. Job 101 was completed and sold for 950. The amount isn't really relevant, but what is relevant right now is I cannot leave this in work in process. So over here, I've got 160 plus 80 plus 90 plus 54. I'm going to show this over here as a credit for 384. What happens to this balance? Well, it was completed and sold, right? So I'm first going to have to put it over here. It's got to leave whip, come into finished goods, but it cannot stay in finished goods inventory. It's got to leave over here, and then it's got to go over to my cost of goods sold. Okay, so coming down right over here. So, and then job 102 has com been completed, but not sold. So if it was, if it's been completed, but not sold, it cannot stay in here, right? Because this is work in process. So over here, I've got 498 to get it out of here. I'm gonna have to go through here and show it as a credit. So this is gonna come over to here and go over to my finished goods inventory. But it doesn't go to cost of goods sold because it was completed, but it was not sold. Okay, job 103, I'm gonna go ahead and add up these amounts and I get a total of 146 because job 103 was started in the month and it was still in process. We're gonna leave this in WIP. So let's kind of review kind of so far. Right, my raw materials inventory, that balance is good. My factory payroll is gonna have a zero balance, right? So this factory payroll is now has a balance of zero. We're not gonna worry about the factory overhead. We'll deal with that momentarily. But over here, my job 100 has a zero balance. Job 101 was completed and sold. Job 102 was completed and sold. So my whip is gonna be here at 146. When I go to my finished goods inventory, I add up my debits and I add up my credits. I subtract my smaller from my larger balance, leaving the remainder on the larger side. I get 498. Now, what does this number represent? It's my only amount over here for my, it was completed, it was completed, but not sold. So I know that this balance is correct because these two balances over here were sold. And tentatively, my cost of goods sold number is going to be at 917. But let's go through and put in the information that we know, right? We're asked to go through and to come up with these different values right over here. So as we look at this over here, my indirect materials that were used in production is going to be 10. My indirect labor is going to be 80, my cost of goods manufactured. And again, I want you to really pay attention to this because I have a lot of students that miss this on the exams. What is cost of goods manufactured represent? It is the collective amount that we sent out of WIP into finished goods inventory. So this is gonna be 533 plus 384 plus 498 or 1415. That is the amount of my cost of goods manufactured. My ending WIP as of 930, it's just this balance over here. My ending finished goods inventory is over here at 498. 
But now I come into this part over here and I got to look at my factory overhead because remember from the last exam, right? Factory overhead has to be what? It has to be zero. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add up 10 and 80, 33, 85, 44, and 27. I get 279. When I add up my credits over here, I get a total of 276. Now, when I subtract the smaller from the larger balance, leaving the remainder on the larger side, I get a number of three. Okay, so when I look at what this is, this balance has to go to zero. So what is the journal entry I'm going to need to make? Well, to make this go to zero, I'm going to need to have a credit over here of three. So I know I have to credit factory overhead over here for three. And okay, now for every credit, I need a debit. Because, and for this type of problem, you're going to assume that the amount is any amount of any adjustment is immaterial. Okay, I'll deal with material adjustments on another one. But over here, if it's immaterial, I'm just going to go ahead and debit cost of goods sold. And so what we're going to do over here is we're going to come up here and we're going to say, okay, my cost of goods sold. I'm debiting this for three. So my ending balance of cost of goods sold is going to be 920. Now, why am I putting it to cost of goods sold? Because when I look at this adjustment relative to the cost of goods sold balance, it's less than 1%. So I can kind of go through and say, okay, I'm just going to put the whole amount to cost of goods sold. So over here, what else do I need to do for the journal entry? I always need a date. So this is going to be 93024. Now, in terms of the description, this is why I wrote actual and applied, okay? My actual was greater than my applied, so I underapplied my factory overhead. So this is going to be to adjust for underapplied factory overhead. Okay, so over here, if I need a debit, it's, if, excuse me, if I need a credit to this, I didn't apply enough. I only applied 276. I should have applied 279. So we say it is under applied. Okay. So this balance has now gone down to zero. So this one over here, the journal entry to go through and record this, this is what we just did right over here. This is the journal entry. So now over here, my cost of goods sold for the month is not just 917 because after the adjustment, it's now going to be 920. Last question over here is what is my gross profit? Well, my gross profit is going to be my sales less my cost of goods sold is going to be my gross profit. Now I know that my cost of goods sold is 920, but how much were my sales? Well, it says job 100 was completed for 1200. Job 101 was completed and sold for 950. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to go ahead and take these two amounts. So my total sales So my total sales is 2150. So over here, this is going to be 2150. Got over here, my cost of goods sold is 920. So my gross profit is going to be 1,230. So my gross profit right over here is going to be 1,230. So that's this question in one video as opposed to being over numerous videos, but hopefully this helps. And um, I want to thank you for being with me here today. Uh, please don't forget to leave any questions you might have below. And I appreciate you liking and subscribing to the channel. I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Have a great rest of your day.